this? The beautiful plant-based vegan restaurant here at the Woolloomooloo Finger Wharf, which Gina, did you know it's a historic building? It's a hundred years old. You wouldn't know it just by sitting here though, would you? It's amazing what they've done with it. It's, um, it's really, really beautiful. Brent Morley, the chef, I, I really am looking forward to, um, to meeting Brent because he's not a, a traditionally um, vegan chef. So no. he's not a plant-based chef. So That's it'll right. be interesting to find out how he even, you know, um, became a vegan chef. And approaches his cooking style with yeah. um, and yep. this, the collaboration between the Avolo Alibi and Matthew Kenny. Matthew Kenny, yes. I, I just think the food is like a, a communal thing that from, from a young age yep. it was always, mum, we didn't eat out a lot, mum always cooked, always in the kitchen making something, you know, whether it's, and the whole family would gather around and that's just where everyone used to come together and enjoy a meal and it was always, still to this day, mum's cooking's the best, um, always love going around there getting looked after, um, so yeah, it's, that's, that's, where it, that's where it's come from, just childhood growing up with with that family orientation around food and dinner table and you know when when friends get together um, there's always food involved there's always some sort of food so yeah that's that's where it comes from I think. What drove your passion to um, to become a chef? Well actually I uh, I fell into the industry by mistake. Oh okay. Uh, when I was when I was younger I just ended up in the kitchen uh, just washing dishes uh, on a weekend and then um, figured out that all the guys that were working there were just having the time of their lives, having a ball, mucking around, and so I, I, I could do this. So uh, yeah, that's where it started from, just ended up getting an apprenticeship there, and one thing led to another, and nearly uh, 15 years later now, and uh, yeah, I'm still doing it. That is kind of a common a trend. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, you know, others have fallen into it because of the waitresses and the late nights and, you know. That's definitely a bonus on the side. But <laughs> <laughs> so you're obviously handy at home in the kitchen. Talk to us about um, crafting up. Yeah, and these dishes that look incredibly good. Yeah, well, we, uh, we have a collaboration with uh, Matthew Kenny. So he's, he's got many recipes out there, many restaurants all over the world. And um, we, we pick and choose what we want to use that he's got. Um, and a lot of times you, you'll be looking on Instagram through his story and, or what he's plated up and you're like, oh, that looks good. And then you'll, you'll message him and go, send me the recipe, he sends the recipe, we have to play around with it. And that's how this one came along. Um, yeah, that's, that? yeah, that's how that one, we got that one, a recipe for that one, just through, through looking at his stuff on Instagram. Obviously, he's not going to give that to everyone that messages him. No. Uh, it's only because we have that collaboration with him. Um, and other, other things come from previous things he's done in the past. He has a, he has a chef that sends through, through recipes and he emails myself um, what he thinks will be good. And we just collaborate what's, what's in season, what we're working with our menu, what our clients and customers actually want and really it just starts with a with an idea a concept of what we want to use what's in season something we haven't used one of the guys want to use it in the kitchen and and we work we work from that like it's it's just we we build on it to, to do the leek dish was five or six different tries um the tempeh dish uh one of the boys jason in the kitchen he came up with that one day um and this this ancient grain dish us through this this is very yeah, so um, so we've we've used uh, five different grains, uh, and it's just called ancient, ancient grains because all, all the grains are from a, like they've been around for years. It just some of them have been forgotten. Everyone knows about quinoa now, yeah. um, lentils, but uh, and not a lot of people know about sorghum or amaranth. That's in there as well. So we got those we got those from a specialty supplier, um, and then we we cook them all separate, mix it up, pomegranate dressing, fresh mint. Um, sauteed mushrooms, whatever we have in season, and and yeah, that's that, that's a dish. It's something mm. a little bit Mediterranean, but it's mm. um, real fresh as well. It's all locally sourced ingredients as well. So yeah. absolutely everything is from uh, you know supporting the local small yeah lo wholesalers local and local growers and that kind yep. of thing. We have a good fruit and veg supplier that um that's always in contact with me with what's new, what's fresh, what I should get. And Keeping that many people wouldn't know about Alibi and the Avola Hotels is that you are very unique in that you are plant-based. Yeah, um, 
and that's a, a new sort of term to the industry, plant-based. I'm not sure it's been around, but it's it's there's a stigma behind vegan food and vegan eating, um, and and this is just an, another way of saying plant-based. We we use 100% plant-based products. We don't we don't use a lot of refined refined sugars or that. We use agave for sweetening or maple syrup, which is a natural product. Um, we use that rather than the sugars and 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 all that. So that's. It's, it's a different way of cooking and um, yeah, it's, it's sometimes challenging to come up with, with nice dishes without that huge hunk of steak or something like that on there, but yeah, honestly, it's, it's, it's been a learning curve, but it's, it's really fun to do at the same time. Yeah. yeah. So you're not vegan yourself? No, you're I'm not. Plant-based? I'm not vegan. I'm you're not, not flexitarian, which no. you're going to have to give us a little bit of a... Have a, uh, you know, yeah, so, uh, that's a rundown a, on that. That's a, another new term which has sort of come into the industry, flexitarian, where it's, it's more um, someone that's a vegetarian but is not strict. So they'll, they'll eat 90% of vegetarian food, but then on occasions, well, I'll go to a friend's dinner party or lunch or barbecue and they will eat meat just because they don't want to put people out and that, that's, that's what they enjoy yeah. doing. That's me, yeah. <laughs> that's my new hashtag, flexitarian. <laughs> yeah, I think well, I'm going to be very flexible today. <laughs> <laughs> and to try, try everything. Out. Absolutely. Yeah. So do we start? Do yeah, we, let's, let's try Let's dig them. in. Yeah. You'll have to, okay, so we know about the... Um, the ancient the grains. Ancient grains. So this is just a mushroom duck cell on the side and a coconut labna, which is a coconut oh. yogurt, which has been hung for a few days to get the extra so water out of it. Oh wow! Yeah, so, nice. so yeah. we'll start with the ancient yeah. grains and then move on to the charred leek with uh, coloured kale and a popped sorghum. So the the sorghum is the same grain that's in that, and it's just a small grain which you can pop like popcorn. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. Like, popcorn. It does look like popcorn. Yeah, but it's just miniature. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Wow! Yeah. And then we have. This is the caramelised tempeh with the pea and coriander pesto. Yeah. And around the outside is just uh, the sea herbs. So you've got samphire, sea banana, sea banana um, there's salt bush and lemon balm as well. So th those, um, those sea herbs, is that, I mean, they're quite contemporary, yeah, in terms of being used in... Uh, they have been used um, for a few years yeah. that, I've, that I know of but it's becoming more trendy to use yeah. and a lot of the suppliers are now getting hold of that and we can use it and we can buy it through our suppliers whereas yeah. before it's hard to get a hold of this kind of stuff but mm -hmm. there are growers out there now that are growing and harvesting it so it's readily available yeah okay amazing let's dig in dig in i do have a juicy question for you do, you, do you feel plant-based is the way of the future in terms of dining out and general eating I, I think it's definitely on the rise um, and it's definitely becoming more trendy and there's a, a lot of other places that are popping up which are doing it. Um, it's, it's going to be something that in the future, it's, I believe that meat is just going to become astronomical and it's too expensive to buy so it's going to be a luxury to be able to eat meat like some people do every day now. So I think, I it's think, sustainable. yeah, I don't think it's sustainable in the amount that we're eating yes. at the moment. Do you think it's kind of, it's just easy to, easier for people to just, you know, cook up a steak and, you know, make a salad? Is that, is it, do you think that's why we kind of tend to just go for that as well? Do you think it's more habitual than? I think, it, I don't know if it's easier. It's people aren't as educated because that's the way yeah. it's always been done. Yeah. We've, we've always just had a steak with three veg and that's mm -hmm. what the parents did and that's what people do but uh, these days it is just as easy to cook up uh, vegetable and make it just as nice. A lot of Middle Eastern, the Middle Eastern cuisine, there's a lot of vegetarian dishes. Yep. Um, Greek, Middle mm -hmm. Eastern, um, Indian as well. Oh yes. yeah. Yeah. So, yep. yeah. And I think they are actually predominantly vegetarian. vegetarian. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, and this is, but this is obviously very modern and contemporary. Um, yeah, it's pretty. It's it's just plated up nicely. It's still. It's, it is pretty. It's got a main. It's got a main element. It's got a puree or a sauce with it, and it's got a garnish. That's what it is, and that's what yeah. the different textures. That's what makes. There's it a lot of curiosity form. around it. I yeah. think. I mean, you know, you kind of look at something, and you need to ask. Yeah. Um, and for me, you know, these looking at these dishes, I would need to ask, what what, do you, what yeah. exactly is it? Because as you say, it looks like avocado, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
I just want to say this leg, it's, it's smoked leg, isn't it? There's a, the, the tail underneath is, is being smoke? macerated in a, in a smoked uh, dressing. Fantastic. Yeah, it's very... So it was a real Just surprise. another, yeah, another thing in there that's like, oh, what's that? I love that. Yeah. The leek is, is literally cut in half and washed, and then just put on the char grill. That's it, on that's a low it. temperature, on the char grill. I, so mean, that, I would never just think to do that. So I always yeah. do the yeah. dice and throw it in with something else, but that is a key feature. Yeah, it's, it's, and you could, you could do that on on a barbecue if you wanted to, you know what I mean? Exactly the same, just cut it in half, wash it, a bit of olive oil, salt and pepper and put it on the char grill. It's actually, that's the, the hero mm. in that dish, the lead. It's about rethinking what you normally do with things and mm. um, and just change, change the way you prepare it and cook it and, and eat it, really. Yep, you mentioned the bar, that's something that is very fun. Just uh, prior to filming today, the team, Gina and myself, we got to indulge in your amazing Cheeseburger spring, spring rolls, rolls. and the pancini with the macaroni yeah. and the mac uh, mac and cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. Yeah, that's yeah. Just a we have sort of the clean side of Alibi, which is the restaurant, which is what we're looking at now, and then we have the dirty side for someone that doesn't want to, you know, sit down and go through a whole whole menu. They just want something quick and dirty and greasy and chips and burger, interesting. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. right because it actually tastes I mean, particularly the the cheeseburger spring rolls tasted yeah like a cheeseburger yeah <laughs> so good yeah the few uh, but they were so light so light yeah, yeah light. Eaten enough. We should have no, I had one <laughs> well, speaking of light that is another big plus to quite basically yeah. is that you don't get that heaviness you mm. do get after yeah, eating meat right. yeah. Yeah. either immediately or the next day mm. Yeah, and the beauty is when you do eat plant-based, if you eat the right balance of everything with the with the carbohydrates and the grains and the protein that comes with it, you will be satisfied. You won't need that yeah. big hunk of meat to yeah. to keep you satisfied as you walk away. So um, it's almost like retraining our brains, really. It is. It's opening people's minds to what can be done with it, and yeah. that you you don't have to eat that. You can eat this and be completely satisfied. Yeah. It's tasty. It's got all the textures visually uh, appetizing as well, good atmosphere in a, in a nice restaurant and you, you'll go away satisfied, very satisfied. I'm going to finish my mouthful just because waste not want not. We are um, ambassadors and sponsors with Oz Harvest yeah. so no waste is allowed. That's right. But I tell you what, from a athletic so point of view, when I was an elite doing my elite running and whatnot, I was completely plant-based, but not consciously deciding that. And I was only asked yeah. by Andrew, my partner, a couple of uh, months ago, when you were yeah. you know, running for Australia, doing yeah. all that type of thing, were you plant-based? And I was like, yes, I was. Because we watched Game yeah, Changers, yeah, and yeah. I think yeah. that would be doing, yeah. if everyone watched Game Changers, Alibaba would be booked out for years in advance. <laughs> a lot of uh, big people in the athletic community and, and that have, have gone plant-based. 100%. Yeah. So, it's very interesting. Well, the studies show that it is very beneficial. Mm. So why not? So, plant-based dessert time. So, for in the dessert side of things, we don't use um, any gelatin for setting. We use like xanthan gum for a stabilizing agent. We use agar agar um, instead of gelatin in some desserts. How do the gums compare to, say, a gelatin? So, I had an interesting question to me mm. yesterday about um, someone had the perception that the gums are not natural, but they're actually plant-based gum when it comes to... Well, they are natural, because most of them are made out of uh, seaweed. Oh, wow. So they're made... Oh, they're all different, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a learning curve how to use those different textures to yep. create the same as what um, an animal, pro animal product would do. Yep. But then, yeah, it's, it's a lot more sustainable if we are using those rather than Animal yeah. Well, I'm going to do the honours instead. Oh, you're very polite. Thanks, Kerry. She's going to give you the smallest pieces. No, yeah, probably. The rest. No, I want to make sure you get all of the um, textures because that is obviously part of the yes, that would be great teamwork here. And I'm going to give you a bit of flour because it's all in the prezzo. And, and I don't know if I've done is. alibi justice here, but um, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Oh. And I'll be polite and wait for you. Oh, that's very kind. <laughs> Would you like me to serve? No, you, you right? serve yourself and then I'll, I'll just finish off the bowl. Bless, I like it. <laughs> that's, that's if there's anything strategy. left. No, I'm going to be a bit mindful there. <laughs>
I just want to check I got a cookie. I did, I think. There with me. I'm going to take that one. There we go. Beautiful. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Oh. Wait, wait. No, <laughs> I know. Just eat it. <laughs> I can just imagine. Mm. I feel like I'm on holidays. Mm. <laughs> it's Yum. Rich. It tastes like that coconut broth. Yum. Yeah. Coconut broth? Yeah. Coconut bounty meats coconut broth. Oh, this is so good. <laughs> the it's almond good. ice cream is really lovely. It's not as um, Intense as coconut ice cream, yeah. straight coconut. Well, that's the thing. If you put coconut cream in, in everything, it just overpowers the flavour. Mm. So that's why the coconut flesh is very um, uh, neutral, right. you could say. Um, so the almond milk, coconut, um, yeah, it's, it makes it, it, yeah. Makes it well. beautiful. Yeah. That is really delicious. And just, you know, the crunch of the biscuit as well. Is, yeah, is a little crunch so and the little good. cocoa nibs. Yeah. Um, I think we have a lot of luck converting people to be plant-based with your degustation menu. We need yeah. to definitely get that out there. It's hard to get someone in here that's a that's a meat eater. Just don't uh, tell them. But once once they're here, <laughs> what it is? They're just tell them you're serving quite, cheeseburgers yeah. and hot dogs. I'm sure that's on the dirty menu, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that'll get them in here. Get them in the door for that. That's oh. good. Once they're here, they're they're very satisfied when they leave. Mm. A lot of people wouldn't know that you guys do a high tea. Yeah. Which is a bit special. A complete plant-based high tea. Amazing. Yeah, so it's you good. get both the hot and cold, so it's a, in the, yep. the traditional format. Yeah, we don't do the tea sandwiches or little quiches or yeah. anything like the traditional sense of things, but we do we do a little plant-based, like it's almost like a canapé, little tasting of what, what we do. Um, and the pastry chef does some amazing little little desserts, bite-sized desserts. Uh, on this on this nice stainless steel stand that we have but um yeah we we, we we go pretty well with the high tea the new menu will be launching with that in the next couple of months it could be on the agenda gina yeah, ladies high tea i think mm -hmm. so well we've certainly enjoyed sharing meals with you today thanks great right. it's been a pleasure thank you so much and uh we're definitely coming back for the high tea and more cocktails and yeah. more of that champagne that we can't pronounce <laughs> <laughs> That's right. yeah. No, it's been, awesome. it's been good.